Okay, um, we've had two very excellent uh, presentations. Uh, firstly, Madame Suryani Ahmed's detailed, helpful, practical lessons, pros and cons of the collaboration, and an honest appraisal of the pros and cons of collaboration, which is, I think we all need if we're going to improve the extent of collaboration, um, and some of the practical outcomes, uh, nonetheless, of uh, the field training exercise in particular, but some of the things that maybe uh, could be improved in, in that area. Hashim, because he's been so involved in Indian Ocean collaboration for so long, uh, identified the problems we've had at Curtin. Uh, it's a sorry history, I won't, I won't go into that, but I think the, the suggestions that he made about what to do, the role of the UN, UNCLOS, ocean resources, uh, a lot of cooperation already existing at the sub-regional level. Territorial problems, more, more, more difficult. Nat natural disasters, of course, an important one. And illegal mi migrants, people trafficking all, trafficking, all very significant issues where states in the region can collaborate. And in particular, his conclusions about how Australia and India uh, can develop a better knowledge of resources, the use of seabed minerals, the potential role of the 1.5 track, which I think will begin, begin to be addressed during this year, uh, and the use of UNCLOS in terms of a potential declaration of conf uh, conduct in the region uh, is, is, is an important one. I remember a conference some years back. We raised the issue of nuclear waste dumping in, uh, in the Indian Ocean, and Hashim Jalal suggested that we try and work towards some kind of regional uh, arrangement for monitoring uh, and prohibiting nuclear uh, waste uh, dumping in the, in the Indian Ocean. And uh, from what uh, Jonathan Mead uh, said towards the end of his presentation, anything is possible. So I would give that uh, role to Jonathan Mead uh, immediately to solve. So I'll uh, l open it up now to, uh, to questions, discussion, comments. Lee Cordner, um, former Naval Officer, part-time academic. Um, thank you, panellists, for that uh, stimulating and thought-provoking presentation on aspects of regional cooperation. Um, I just wanted to make a comment um, to, I guess, add to the richness of what um, Ambassador Hajim had outlined and also uh, Madam Suriano. Um, it's from my own personal experience with CSCAP, the Council for Security Cooperation in the Asia Pacific, and the ASEAN Regional Forum. And, and it's in this sort of um, vein that's been raised now by several speakers of the lack of a active um, track two, track 1.5 entity in the Indian Ocean region. So in addition to the excellent work going on under ADMM Plus, uh, also under ARF, uh, for example, with CSCAP feeding into it, we were able to run study groups on offshore oil and gas safety and security, which then fed into the ARF intersessional meeting on maritime security held in Seoul, Korea last year, in April last year. That resulted in the work being then fed into a maritime security working group on marine environmental protection, which met in Honolulu a few weeks ago, which and I've been personally invited to attend each of those as a track two resource person, if you like. Um, there'll be a further meeting in Beijing um, about uh, the end of this month or early in May to progress that work further, which will then lead into ultimately the ARF Council of Ministers meeting uh, later this year. So I guess I just wanted to reinforce that um, in addition to the ADM M plus work, which has its own specific focus on defence-related matters. Under the auspices of the ARF, another range of maritime security-related work has also been ongoing, which also involves maritime security um, agencies and so on, but has much wider application, particularly in marine environmental protection and that sort of work. 
So I guess if there's one takeaway from, from this IONS forum, I guess is the need to, for IONS and, and IORA and so on to support the, the track two slant track 1.5 because I just think it, it prevent, preside, provides all sorts of opportunities for serious work and serious issues to be progressed. Thank you. Could I just add one comment to uh, that uh, uh, comment from Lee? Um, Jonathan Mead mentioned that there's a unique window of opportunity given that Australia is in the position it's in with regard to IONS and IOR. Indonesia is also in a similar position. And Indonesia can also play a collective role with Australia on, on these issues. That, that was just a comment. Are there any more, any more questions? Or everybody's tracked out. Yeah. It's okay. It's on. Um, just, just to add to your comments just now. Thank you, anyway, for your contributions to that. Um, as for the ADMM Plus um, work expert working group on maritime security, um, we do engage the track uh, 1.5 and 2 um, to give talks to us um, at the beginning of um, any expert working group. For example, when we had the first one in Perth, uh, we did invite uh, speakers from the universities um, to give us some talks, uh, an overview about the maritime security. Uh, in fact, the last um, expert working group that we had in Malacca, uh, we had a, a seminar prior to the expert working group, and we truly appreciate um, the uh, views and the talks given by the uh, track to um, contribu contribution. Thank you. Ashim, would you like to say anything at all about Indonesia's role within IOR at all? Would you like to say anything about Indonesia's potential role within IORA uh, in, in light of the issues that you raised? Well, we have been very supportive of the IORA. In fact, we participated from its very beginning. Uh, my memory goes back to the Arusha meeting before we had meetings in Mauritius. And later on in Mauritius, we worked together, of course, to formulate the basic principle of the IRA. Uh, but if I can be very frank, one problem that we had at that time was our difficulty of bringing in Pakistan into the IRA, because not no, no, no consensus on including Pakistan in the IRA at that time. That's later on developed uh, into some kind of uh, continued working with the Mauritius, and we have been attending the meetings in the various capitals with regard to that one. Uh, but since then I'm a retired person, the last meeting that I attended was in Muscat, uh, some years back, and then after that, I don't attend any more meeting on that one. I've retired already. Yeah. But up to now, I know Indonesian government continue to pay very serious attention to the development of the RIA, yeah. and as much as possible, if uh, it can, we can contribute in many ways, we could do that. Yeah. And Indonesian government does contribute a lot of activities to the RIA, the, the one that I know of. Thank you. And I think Aus Australia also are very active in that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Um, good afternoon. I've enjoyed the um, presentations very much this um, couple of days. Uh, my name's Siobhan Bacon. I happen to be a logistician, which may not be the flavour of this conference. There's more warriors here than logisticians. One of the things that strikes me is that in many of the presentations, there's been a lot made of uh, reduced resources mm. that can be put into mm. a lot of the work that IONS wants to do. Mm. And the other thing that struck me is that there are many, many forums 
And I'm just wondering if there is an opportunity to do some consolidation mm -hmm. of the efforts because um, when you look at the um, forums that this conference has mentioned and then the many others that um, happen, including training exercises, it just strikes me from a logistics point of view um, and the reduced um, resources that can be put into this for many defence forces that maybe some consolidation may be a very good um, opportunity to um, get some concerted effort into some specific areas that particularly Irons might want to pursue. The deep ocean process, I think in our region, in the <coughs> Indian Ocean, two countries already obtained exploration right for the resources. As I was explaining, India in the central part of the Indian Ocean for polymetallic nodules, and China in the Southwest Indian Ocean mountain ridge for metal crust at the sea mounds. The way to obtain that one is through the International Seabed Authority in Jamaica that manage that one. There are two modalities to get that. First, you do your own scientific research first and then you apply to the International Seabed Authority for the exploration right, which resulted later on in exploitation rights. But there are conditions for that. If I'm not mistaken, you must have spent at least some $30 million to do the first exploration right before you are being given those right by the Seabed Authority. The second easiest way to do is that every exploratory right that you apply, you have to divide that into two equal quality. One is you continue to do it. The other one is, is being reserved for developing countries. Mm. Uh, some countries in the Pacific Ocean apply for this reserve area. Now, I know two countries in the Pacific Ocean have already applied that. One is Nauru, the other one is Tonga. Both of them established marine resources companies, and I think Australia has done quite a lot in that one, the Nautilus Company of <coughs> Australia that are, uh, you know, encouraging Nauru and Tonga, and they have applied exploratory area in the Pacific Ocean that are reserved for developing countries, and they have obtained it. So that is one way to do. Uh, as a result of two exploration area, that, uh, two, two concession area that are already being given in the Indian Ocean, Actually, there are also two reserve areas now. One is in the Indian Ocean area. The other one is in the Chinese exploratory area. Hmm. Now, I don't know whether anyone have, expli have, have uh, sort of uh, applied for that one. But the possibility uh, is, is there. Okay. Now, there are two rules, uh, three rules that are already being adopted by the International Seabed Authority with regard to these resources. First, with regard to polymetallic nodules at the bottom of the ocean for production of nickel, uh, <coughs> coal, uh, nickel, uh, copper, and, and things like that. 
India applied for that one in the Central Indian Ocean Basin. There are already rules for that one. The second rule says on sea mount crust, usually for gold, other metals, and so forth. There are already rules also on how to apply that, that have been approved by the International Civil Authority. That was applied by China. And the third one is what we call polymetallic sulfide at the bottom of the ocean. And there's no application yet in the Indian Ocean. But Russia has already obtained that right in the central part of the Atlantic Oceans between Brazil and Africa. So they're open. In the Pacific Ocean, there are already a lot of concession area for polymetallic nodules, where Japan, Korea, Germany, Russia, France, UK, and so forth have obtained uh, exploratory right there. And unfortunately, in the Indian Ocean, so far there are only these two, that is China and uh, uh, China and India. And I understand lately also Korea is uh, beginning to uh, pay much attention and begin the process also on that one. Thank you. Uh, maybe I can answer the uh, second um, issue um, on the um, concerted effort. Um, there's, there's always opportunities um, to explore this kind of, of um, uh, initiatives, um, um, but um, this can be probably be held in the future. But uh, we have to be aware about the uh, differences in composi compositions of um, the different groupings that we have. Um, ADMM plus, for example, is a 10 plus 8 uh, countries, uh, whilst um, IONS has um, 36 member countries, and um, the other groupings would have a different composition in terms of the number, uh, the different um, countries that would be involved in this um, exercise or or training that you are referring to. But who knows, maybe in the future, maybe um, there will be some ideas on how this can be collaborated. We don't know. It can be explored. If I could just make a comment about the general issue that you raise, which is that of, I think, the multiplicity of agendas that we all have and the overlapping and interconnectedness of them all. Clearly, there's need for some kind of rationalization. Uh, but it's a particular problem, fairly obviously, for most states around the Indian Ocean Rim. Most of these states are poor states. To simply have the resources to attend all of the meetings that we require them to do is extremely difficult. Um, so, you know, I, I have a view about Australia's position in this regard. I mean, I, I feel that um, to some extent Australia suffers from what I call territorial overstretch. You know, you simply are wanting to do far too much over too great an area with too few resources, and you simply can't do it. You have to identified priorities. And I think the priorities are in the process of being formulated currently. Uh, that's my opinion. Um, and I think also in terms of the role of IONS and the potential collaboration with IORA, maybe a focus on two issues that overlap directly with the IORA uh, priority areas, that is maritime security and disaster management would give the whole thing a, a much more of a focus, a collaborative focus. We've got time just for a couple more questions, if there's any. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dennis. I'm uh, Dr. Ghosh from Observer Research Foundation in India. Um, I wanted to probably take off from there. You mentioned about... Can you uh, speak up a little bit, please? Uh, is, is it clear? Yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'd like to take off from where um, you left off because I've been, um, I, I found the two presentations really excellent. Um, uh, but there are two issues, and uh, forgive me for being very forthright about this, uh, which were raised. One, of course, Pakashim raised about uh, the natural resources, especially. Uh, the minerals which are being exploited or about to be exploited in, 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 in the seas. And he mentioned the polymetallic nodules. The question he asked me also uh, during my presentation. 
And the other is uh, the role of ions, uh, because I keep hearing this IORA and uh, ions, and I also heard uh, some time back that there was a move to sort of subsume ions into the IORA. That was the thought process behind some governments. Now, I would like, and this is entirely, of course, my personal view. Um, when IONS was conceived, uh, it, since the navies were involved, the main thrust was on having a board for discussing maritime security. That was the thought process. One looked into various uh, models that were available, including the WPNS, the Panchati Raj, which was suggested, etc. So that has, I would say, to remain the focus of IONS. Now, IORA, and I, I remember uh, writing about this, and of course, Dennis, you are a real expert on IORA, IORARC. The, the focus on maritime security has come in during the last two or three ministerial meetings. Maritime secur security does not find a mention in the charter of the IORA. It was mentioned in Mingaluru, it was mentioned earlier, and this was in context of two issues. One was SLOC security, and the other was HADR. These are probably, and you're absolutely right, and I entirely agree with you, these are the two issues which should be sort of collaborated along with IONS. Now, IONS should remain an independent organization and not be sort of subsumed into the larger organization of IORA. Regarding uh, Pakashim's point, <coughs> I think it would probably, I, I, I couldn't agree with him more that uh, it is probably uh, more agreeable to share technology mm. to exploit these sort of polymetallic nodules that India uh, is trying to do, and China and others have shown uh, interest. But is really IONS the forum or the fora to discuss this? Is IONS equipped to do that? I'm not too sure. I think it's a debatable issue. A more appropriate fora for that probably would be IURA. I think they are better equipped to look into this. So when one raises these issues, I think one has to look into the charter of the particular <coughs> organization which one uh, is looking into. Mm -hmm. IONS is more of a security uh, driven organization and of course HADR is very much part of it. So I just thought I will uh, put forward this uh, uh, view which is entirely of course my personal. Thank you. Thanks Brother. Uh, th thank you. I always like to look security issue in a broader context. Uh, in my mind, you know, security issues also involve management of economic issues, management of resources, even management of space, mm. like shipping and navigation, actually management of the ocean space environment now <coughs> those are also if not being managed can create security problems that's why in the beginning i was mentioning that in my view i would be speaking on a much broader issues of security mm. broad perspective mm. rather than simply quote a military perspective mm -hmm. but also the perspective that i involve other factors that in the end may influence the security problems uh, in, the, uh, in the Indian Ocean. Like fisheries management, for instance. Yeah. Resources management can easily create problem of security if we are not very uh, careful uh, in doing that. So that is uh, the way uh, my perception is. That is, of course, does not exclude the possibility or the discussion on security uh, which are based on military activities. 
that uh, I, I've never said, said that uh, exclude discussion mm. on uh, military mm. uh, activities that are the important for the security issues. So all I'm saying is that uh, I look at security from the broader perspective than simply military uh, activities. And uh, maybe because I'm not a military person, that's why I look from it uh, from a different kind of uh, a perspective. Um, share of science and technology. I consider that is also important in the sense that those of us who have a better knowledge of technology, of science, should actually be able also to share it with the other uh, partners in the Indian Ocean. And uh, I have seen, for instance, some technology in India, and I've been invited there to look at it. And it's rather impressive, you know, that India has met quite extensive uh, kind of uh, progress with regard to uh, seabed uh, mining uh, activities and knowledge on that one. And uh, at that time, my impression was that India did not object. They invited me, in fact, mm -hmm. and other groups to look into the progress that uh, they have been able to achieve. And we are very happy with that one, and we congratulate them for all the achievement that uh, India has, has done. And therefore, I should think that if any of the Indian Ocean countries are also interested in the exploitation of the seabed resources of the Indian Ocean, uh, they should learn more on the science and technology uh, of exploration and exploitation on that one. Thank you. Okay, I think we've just now just about run out of time, so uh, I just want to, on your behalf, thank our two speakers, Madam Suryani Ahmed and uh, Hashim Jalal, for two excellent presentations that have given us many thought-provoking uh, ideas and generated a discussion which has gone well beyond time. So thank you very much.